Hello, today we're going to talk about SaaS financial models. What metrics a startup or a growing SaaS company needs to focus on. And a quick walkthrough of our ready-to-use spreadsheet template that's going to make your job a whole lot easier. Any SaaS financial report has two equally important parts, SaaS metrics and the balance sheet. The first part focuses on SaaS-specific metrics like ARR, churn, and LTV. The second part is your P&L statement. It records income, costs, and indicates how profitable the business is. This gives you a combined health check of your product and your business. The main purpose of a financial model is to understand the current financial position of your company and use that information to make better decisions about your future. Let's dive in. We begin with the revenue report. Right at the top, we first calculate the most essential metric of any SaaS business, the ARR. We take the beginning ARR in January, add new and expansion revenue, subtract the downgrade revenue and churn to get the ending ARR for the month. This figure becomes the beginning ARR for February. The second section displays the figures using which the ARR numbers are calculated. New ARR comes from multiplying the number of deals acquired in that month into the ARPU, average revenue per deal. The expansion ARR, downgrade ARR, and churn are calculated from their respective percentages. The cost incurred in services like implementation and migration is accounted for here. This figure multiplied by the number of deals gives us the total cost of professional services. Subscription revenue roughly shows you the revenue that can be recognized for that month, or otherwise also known as MRR, your monthly recurring revenue. The last part of this report keeps track of the number of your customers. Like your ARR, we arrive at the customer count for a month by adding new customers and accounting for logo churn. Before we move on to the PL statement, there are some key points to remember when you begin using the template. The yellow cells are where you input your company's number in order to populate the rest of the report. There are two identical tables in this report, marked revenue forecast and actuals. When you enter the beginning ARR of January here, the forecast table predicts your company's number for the rest of the year. At the end of each month, it's a good practice to see how well you measure up to your forecast numbers. The PL report summarizes the revenue, costs, and expenses of a company during a specified period. When used effectively, this report can act as the single source of truth to assess the financial health of a business. Let's begin. The first section records income from two streams, subscriptions and professional services. Here, we have broadly categorized our expenses into these categories. The first expense category can be called cost of revenue, which is the cost we incur to support our existing customers. So under this, we have hosting expenses, customer support, and professional services. Together, they're also known as COGS, cost of goods sold. These figures give us the gross profit and the gross profit margin. The next category maps out operating expenses, which is the cost of acquiring new business, developing the product, and keeping the company running. Here we have R&D, sales and marketing, and general and administrative expenses. Each of these expenses has an employee component and a non-employee component. Let's quickly jump to these two sheets to understand how they influence our P&L statement. The employee cost report shows the number of employees in your organization and forecasts the cost of employing those resources per month using their CTCs and start dates. Classifying employees according to their role in the PL statement makes it easy to attribute the cost to their relevant expense category. The non-employee cost report accounts for all other expenses besides employee salaries like employee benefits and tech infrastructure. These can vary month to month and are also directly attributed to their respective expense categories in the PL statement. Both the employee cost and the non-employee cost together influence the numbers in our PL statement. The percentage of revenue taken by each of these expense categories, also called the efficiency ratio, is calculated to understand their impact. The last section takes the interest expense and tax payable into account to give us the net profit or loss. The interest expense represents the interest payable on any borrowed funds and the tax amount due typically depends on your geographical location. 
In addition to these ready-to-use reports, we're also giving you a bonus dashboard on unit economics. This report describes a business model's revenue and cost in relation to a single unit. For example, we have CAC, the cost of acquiring a single customer. These metrics act as crucial indicators in a product's journey and any SaaS startup with their salt should definitely keep their eye on them. By now, you should have a working understanding of a SaaS financial model, its purpose, and how it can help you grow your business. You can download our template from the description below and get started right away. Happy building!